Right, so today we're going to go over question 3 from the Edexcel IGCSE for the Pure Maths Sample Assessment Material, that is the new syllabus, the 2017 syllabus. So we have this trigonometry question here, and the first thing I notice is that the angles in functions are just 2 theta plus 30. They're not theta, they're just 2 theta plus 30, 2 theta plus 30. So what the first thing, I, first thing I'm going to do right off the bat is rewrite this inequality to be in terms of 2 theta plus 30. And I'm going to assign this to some arbitrary letter like u. And then I'm going to solve 2 cos u plus tan u equals 0. Okay, so first things first, let's rewrite this inequality. 0 is less than or equal to theta is less than 180. Then we want to get 2 theta plus 30. So we'll say 0 is less than or equal to 2 theta is less than 360. We're just multiplying the whole thing by 2 here. And then we're going to add the 30 degrees at the end. So 30 is less than or equal to 2 theta plus 30 less than 390. So let's call this a random letter like u. So say 30 is less than or equal to u is less than 390. And what we'll do now is taking this, we're going to solve 2 cos u plus tan u is equal to 0. So let's just write down this equation here again. 30 is less than or equal to u is less than 390. 2 cos u plus tan u is equal to 0. Now, first things first, I want to put these on separate sides because then I can manipulate them easier. So we'll subtract tan u from both sides. And we get 2 cos u equals minus tan u. And now, what, what, do I do, what do I want to do next? What can I do? Well, part of me wants to get this tan u into terms of sine u and cos u because it will be easier to move stuff around like that. It will be easier to work with. So we use the identity that tan equals sine over cos to transform this into minus tan u at minus sine u over minus cos u. So now we scroll down, we get 2 cos u is equal to minus sine u over cosine u. And this is kind of awkward on both sides. So what we'll do first, we if we multiply both sides by cosine u, we can get rid of the denominator here and we'll get 2 cosine squared u equals minus sine u. And I think that that is the best option at the moment because using the identity that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, we can express cosine squared u as 1 minus sine squared u. And if we get this 1 and sine squared and regular sine we can move it all to one side and solve it as a quadratic. So that's what we're going to do for this question. So let's multiply it both sides by cosine u. You get 2 cos squared u equals minus sine u. And then we rephrase this to be 2 minus 2 sine squared u in line with this inequality, where cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. So 2 minus sine squared u, uh, 2 minus 2 sine squared u, we're multiplying the whole thing by 2, equals minus sine u. And finally, we can add this to this side and this side, and we'll get 0 is equal to 2 sine squared u minus sine u plus 2. Oh, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. My bad. 
Now, what we do here, we are solving a quadratic for sine u. So sine u is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you will have seen this formula before. Essentially, if we evaluate this formula where minus b is 1, b squared is 1, minus 4ac is minus 2 times minus 4 is 8 times 2 is 16, 2a is 4. If we evaluate this all, we get that sine u is equal to 1 plus or minus root 17 over 4. Okay. 4, yes, 4, yes. Okay, so given that root 17 is obviously going to be bigger than 4 because it's bigger than root 16, 1 plus something bigger than 4 over 4 is going to be outside the range of negative 1 to 1 that the sine function can be in. So it is obvious that sine u must be the negative option, 1 minus root 17 over 4. And now to find the value of u, what you do in exam is just use the inverse sine function on your calculator. Find sine negative 1, 1 minus root 17 over 4. And I have that right here. I'm going to go to Symbol Lab and find arcsine. Arcsine is just a fancy way of saying sine negative 1. Arc is just inverse, I think. And we want to find the arcsine of 1 minus root 17 over 4. So, now we know it's minus 51.33 degrees. However, that doesn't help us. Your calculator is going to give you a result like this, and you'll need to interpret it the right way to find all the values of, of u, in this case, in the correct range. So if we go back here, let's look at the unit circle for a moment. Flashback to learning about the unit circle. So you have cosine axis, the sine axis, and the circle itself. And if you quickly draw a unit circle, you go to what is roughly minus 50, because we know that this is equal to minus 51.33 degrees. It's always a good idea to work in two decimal places because the answer wants it to be accurate to one decimal place. So any changes made in calculation and accuracy being lost, that won't really affect you if you use more than one. Minus 51.33, we want it to be somewhere between 30 and 390. So if we look at this, this is the level of the sign. And it seems like the angle here also has the same sign. Now, what is this angle? This angle is 180, which is here, and then plus 51.33, because that's like the gap here. And furthermore, this angle is just going to be 360 plus minus 51.33, because if you go one full rotation, you get a value of theta that is actually within the range. So we are now left with the fact that u could be either, let's say, 231.33, or it could be, what's well, 360 minus 51.33, you're left over with 308. 0.67. We will turn this u back into 2 theta plus 30 
because that was the substitution we made in the start to make the equation easier to solve. 2 theta plus 30 is 231.33. 308.5 0.67. Now, what we can do, subtract 30 from all the values, so you just get 2 theta is 201.33 and also 278.67. And finally, divide by 2 to get the values of theta, which are the solution to this question. So you'll see theta is 2, 0, 0, 0.67, and 139.34, da, da, da. And with these values, all you just need to do is round to one decimal place to give the answer like they wanted you to would be 100.7 degrees and 139.3 degrees. And that is the solution to this question at the beginning. So to recap, take it step by step, rearrange this interval so that you know what values of the angle you are solving for, So and then you replace the angle in the brackets with something new to make it easier. And then you can finally do all your magic with the trig identities and stuff until you're left with the inverse of a trigonometric function to find an actual value for the angle that you can manipulate with the value you substituted in to get the answer. So now let's check if we're right. This is just me scrolling down as fast as I can. Right, finally we're at the mark scheme. And yep, that was correct. So if you'll see, it did indeed turn into a quadratic that you had to solve. You'd find this, and then theta would be 100.7, 139.3, as we answered before. Alright, thank you for watching.